Good morning, folks. The Mobile Observatory is in Madison, Wisconsin for a few days. This happened over the weekend, a fireball brighter than the moon over the United States. More fire in Ecuador as the Tungurahua volcano is an uptick with small eruptions and rising magma. The climate extreme swings continue. The cold records, although they don't get as much press as the heat records, are actually dominating the U.S. and a good portion of the globe. Seriously. According to the official records, looking at the daily records for the last week, the last month, the last 365 days, and in 2014 thus far, cold has dominated heat in the U.S., and it's not close. Monthly records show the same trend. Cold overtaking heat despite the mainstream media's assertions to the contrary. Well, what about the global readings? These are a bit closer, but still a losing battle for heat. It still holds a slight edge over the 365 days, but 2014 thus far, we know cold is the winner. The same patterns hold for the global monthly records. Another point for off-world changes is the volcanic outburst of Io. It took them a year to confirm it, but this was indeed a major volcanic outburst on Jupiter's moon. They expect these every year or two. Well, how about these three in a two-week span? More changes throughout the solar system. Typhoon, 100 miles north of our last check. No way this misses Japan. But the larger concern is in the Central Pacific. We see three systems in a line in the first. Yzel, a hurricane, Category 3, on a direct line to the Hawaiian Islands. And right after that, Julio will slip in behind Yzel. A third storm could form this week. Meanwhile, Bertha making her way up the east coast of the United States, offshore and not doing much to the coastline yet, likely not for a few days, and up into Canada. Europe, two lows up north, each drawing a convergence to the south. Remember last night's second upload explaining these patterns. Check it out if you missed it. The effect of these two should be quite easily seen here. The power storm has left New Zealand and even tucked right next to it. Its north swinging convergence misses the island completely. Can't say the same for the tail of this convergence from deep near Antarctica. Again, last night's second video is helpful here. Simple story in North America. Air masses slamming together in a convergence, producing bad weather below as they exchange energy. Flash floods tonight. It appears we had elevated density all evening in the solar wind, with a speed peak to boot. This could be the halo eruption from days ago or more coronal streams. Either way, our shield handled it fairly well but does reflect the extra energy input with a break from the smoother curves. Solar flaring remains dismal and our sunspots are weak as well. Going A to C, we can notice areas where magnetics are trying to mix but they can't seem to get it together and are of generally smaller size. As of now, I don't believe we have a single delta spot on the disk. We know the coronal hole up north is departing. The southern incomer is now just about earth facing. Quakes took a couple days off between these openings but may be about to re-ramp as earth has entered negative influence and the south indeed maintains power as of the latest force readings on ISWA's magnetic connectivity panel. The primary solar eruption watch right now comes not from sunspots but from this massive plasma filament. It is so much bigger than Earth that it challenges perspective in our daily lives. We're hoping this one stays still for the duration. Solar tornado to kick off shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.